Oh, that feels great. <laughs> All right. Let's just Hollywood it real quick. Let's see what that looks like. That looks awesome. Hi, my name is Valentina V and welcome back to set. Today, I'm very excited. It is a special experiment that I've been wanting to do forever. I tweeted a few weeks ago, not everything needs Promist. Promist is this, it's a type of diffusion filter that you put in front of the camera. And I got a lot of flack. There seem to be a lot of people who put Promist in front of their lens 100% of the time. I'm here to tell you that there's other diffusion filters you should probably take a look at. Today, we rented so many different diffusions. We're gonna compare them and we're gonna prove that you don't always need to use Promist. It may not always be the diffusion of choice. I'm so excited, let's go. What is a diffusion filter? This is a piece of glass that you put in front of your lens that helps take off the edge of a digital image, helps make it look a little bit softer, a little bit more cinematic so that it's not this crunchy video look. They also come in different strengths, one eighth, one quarter, one half. Doing a test between them would be to make sure that all the filters are the same strength. So I got one half strength. I wanna show that the changes are subtle. You may want to use one and another one might be available. You can still use a different one and have a similar effect. So according to the triangle of diffusion, the Promist is actually the most palasive filter. So it's the filter that's going to bloom the highlights the most. Second would be pearlescent, then would be glimmer glass, then will be satin. Tiffin says that satin is going to be your most midpoint type filter. It's going to be the filter that halates, but also has a little bit more low con, but also uh, softens wrinkles and softens the resolution a little bit. Then of course the softest is going to be soft effects, but that one is going to not reduce the contrast and not halate as much. And then we have low con, which is not going to halate or reduce resolution and it's going to reduce the contrast. You might be tempted to comment, oh, what about prism effects diffusion? What about moment cinebloom, all this stuff? Listen, we only have so much budget, okay? And also, I just wanna to stick to like one company, one type of filtration set, just so that we can compare them the best and give you as many options as possible. We're doing our best, okay? But if there is a filter that you wanna know about, leave it in the comments and uh, let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation. So we have our talent here and he is tinkering with a clock. But first of all, it's an indoor moonlight scene. So how did we do that? So, I mean, we first started with our moonlight that's outside. We uh, actually ended up tensing these windows, putting a 12 by 12 ultra bounce right out there with the Nova P600C, kind of like bouncing into it and bringing us back that soft light. And the awesome thing about these windows is, and, and depending on the location that you go to, you know, you'll find cool things like this where like the window kind of already had a frost on it. Yeah. So it made the moonlight softer. These awesome. are really frosted. It, it creates just like a little bit of blue ambience in the background and makes everything just less monochromatic. Then in the back here, we have just a little bit to spice up the background. What's this? So we have a Aperture 300X with the spotlight mount with a 19 degree lens. Walked it up right against the wall and put an opal frame right in front of it so that we could still get the texture from the gobo, but it spreads softly and nicely. Yeah, it's kind of like speckled back here. So it's not like a full wash and it kind of gives you like, who knows, there's a bunch of stuff back here, workshop vibes. What we want you to pay attention to are three specific things in this image that are going to change depending on what type of filter we use. So first, let's take a look at the key light. I really wanted it to be sidey, not so frontal, because fall off is how fast the light dims from the brightest part of the face to the darkest part of the face. Now, what about our rim light over here? So what's awesome with this is we ended up using an Aperture 60X, backing it up, going up as high as we can, and just hitting uh, him with a nice daylight balanced light just because you wanted a crunchy look, so we, you know. Yeah, well, I wanted it crunchy, meaning I wanted it to look digital uh, because I want to show you just how much this diffusion, each diffusion filter will take the digital edge off. So without any diffusion, what you'll notice is that you can see every individual hair. The background's a little bit darker, his hair is white, and we have that blue light coming onto him. Fall off on the face, the crunchiness of the hair, and the last thing is the halation. Our PD kind of just placed, you know, a few of these all over the place, and we just put Aperture B7Cs in them. 
you get texture on the walls, you get, you know, ambience in the background, and for you, for camera, it works out because now you'll get to see. The halation. So halation is like the amount that it blooms, but also important for me, with each of these tests, we are going to kind of loosen up the head of the tripod and we're gonna go around like this in a circle because a lot of these diffusion filters, they have little elements inside them that refract the light. So you have to decide, oh, if I'm on a moving camera, if my camera's gonna move and we have a bunch of practicals in the back, is this going to be distracting? So that's what we're testing as well. So pay attention to all those things and let's get on with the test. So Black Promise, the one that everyone loves and uses, as you can see, it had the most halation. And as we went down the line uh, to pearlescent, to glimmer glass, to black satin, it started getting less halated. Now, as far as that refraction, I don't know, what do you think? To me, it looked pretty much the same the entire time. You're gonna get those refractile elements if you decide to move your camera. Then we started going to the soft effects. That was the one that had very little, if any, halation around the lights, but it had very, very soft skin tones. So that's one that you would wanna probably use for beauty work. And then we had Low Con, which is the one that had the least softness, but it also, to me, it felt like it was the most subtle of all of them. It just brought up the black slightly, but didn't do much more than that. So if you wanna bring up those blacks even more, I would highly recommend either the fog or the smoke. The big differences between the fog and the smoke were that the fog did have visible halation, but the halation fell off the highlights in a linear way. Whereas the smoke was more of an overall filter and it increased the level of the blacks in the entire image overall. It didn't stick to those practicals in the background. Now, we are gonna compare all of these to a fully hazed room. So we're gonna turn on the hazer in there and see what that looks like and why it is good for you and why you should use it. And then we're gonna do three little techniques that you can do at home. The closest diffusion filter to this is smoke. So smoke is meant to mimic the look of a hazed room. You can look at the comparison between the haze, the real haze, and the smoke filter here. But the big advantage of haze is that you have nothing in front of your lens so that there is no refractions. You can see us wobbling it here in the smoke filter. You can see us wobbling it in the hazy environment. There is none of that little ghosty artifact from the practicals, so it's nice and clean. Any sort of spotlight, it's going to catch on the particles in the air and it's gonna create a column of light for you. So pros and cons, pick your poison, but I like haze. Now, let's move on to some experimental diffusions. A lot of people use diffusion filters to make it look like it's a dream-like state or it's something that happened in the past or to emulate an old film camera. And you can do this on the cheap if you just smear your lens with something greasy. We have a very nice lens, we're not gonna smear it. Instead, they actually let you rent just clear filters. So we have a clear filter here. And instead of smearing it with my grease, I have some Vaseline. So it's gonna get real gross here for a second. Well, that feels great. <laughs> what I want to do is create it a very thin layer 
um, but do it all over the filter. All right, let's get a let's get a load of that. Let's just Hollywood it real quick. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, baby, that looks awesome. The ideal Vaseline ratio is very little, very little Vaseline. It would have been easier to just press the filter against my face because it's so hot in this attic and just smear around whatever remnants of face grease I had. That would have been faster, easier, and more effective. The next one we're gonna try is a stocking. You can use anything from like a woman's pantyhose. Here we're using a little net from one of our uh, gear bags. And it creates this really interesting speckled sun ray effect. We also lose a lot of definition here. So it makes it super, super soft. So I would definitely use this technique maybe without the practicals. So if you have a shot that doesn't have a ton of practicals, but you want it to be super soft, super dreamy, you can definitely just put a net on your lens. Now, the last of our experimental series, this is something that I did in the very first episode I ever did, where I wanted something to look like an 80s beauty commercial. You can ping a light directly at the lens, very close to it at an angle. And what that'll do is it'll just create a wash over the entire image and bring up the blacks. Why would you wanna use this? Well, it does give a more diffused look. It gives it a little bit more of a vintage feel and it's not something that's in front of the lens, right? I think it's just a great cheap thing that you can use. If you don't have a flashlight, you can use your phone even and point it like this and still get a nice diffused look. I wouldn't 100% rely on this method to work all the time because depending on your focal length, your lens manufacturer, you know, an ultra prime is gonna look a little bit different like than a Tokina Vista. So definitely make sure that you do a test before you actually use this technique because sometimes it may not be a wash. Sometimes it could actually create a flare, which is the opposite of what you want. All right, let's, let's go for it. I think we got it. That's a wrap, everybody. I love you, and I love you, and I love you. Obviously, there are so many other filters, not just from Tiffin, but other companies that we didn't test out in this test. Listen, we're only human. We can only do so much. If you want to communicate with us, if you want to tell us what to do, just leave it in the comments. In fact, um, give this video a like, uh, subscribe to the channel because all we want to do truly is just give you more cinematography education, answer all your questions, and make sure that you are the best prepared to go out and kill it in the professional world of cinematography. All right, so Tway, uh, what's the comment question? What do you got for me? All right, this one's from your diffusion episode, and it's from Jonas. Could you do a tutorial on how to deal with very limited space? Ooh, that is such a good question. We, we, will, we will do that. Yeah, we'll I feel like we deal a lot with limited spaces. We don't often talk about what, how much uh, a limitation it is to have like space and not be able to put the lights that you want. But how do we get around with that generally? I mean, number one, you want really low profile lights. Mm -hmm. So like a light mat or a tube. Yep. Um, number two, you want to figure out what is the longest space in the room that you can shoot. Mm -hmm. And so shoot towards the longest space in the room. And number three, it's wide lenses, honestly. Yeah. A wide lens is going to make the space look bigger. So be prepared. Yeah. Another one for the yeah. books. Yeah. 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 Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I need to find my house keys because they're in my jacket and I don't know where that is.